Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, mini PCs, love them or hate them, there are plenty available and today we're looking at the Geekom IT 13 2025 edition. This has an i9 13900HK, 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD, or at least this one does as configured. There's also a two terabyte storage option on the site. This one is going to set you back 649 here in the UK. And I want to talk about its performance today because it does, of course, have Iris XE graphics as well, which we're going to try and game on. That's what we're all about mainly here on this channel. This is probably going to be my last mini PC review for a while. I want to go back to building some proper cheap desktop setups, but I wanted to see how this thing handles a few of my favorite games. And we also need to talk about the performance, the heat, the noise, and the more in-depth specifications of this thing. So if we take a look around the machine first, we've got USB 3 at the front here and audio jack power button. On the side, Kensington lock support. The other side, SD card support. Around the back, we have 2.5G Ethernet, two HDMI ports, USB 4, USB 3, and USB 2. The top of this thing pops up, pops off, sorry, to reveal a bit of metal with the CPU fan underneath. And the bottom is easily removed with these four screws just loosen those this little plate at the bottom will pop off and then you can add another albeit smaller ssd replace the ssd that's already in here or add a 2.5 inch ssd which i really do appreciate in 2025 not enough little systems come with 2.5 inch uh, ssd or hdd support in my opinion so the i9 13900hk inside this thing as expected in a small form factor a very small form factor in fact, I don't think I've ever seen a mini PC this small with an i9 in it before, but as expected, it's gonna run pretty warm. Now we have a few options in the BIOS. We can play about with the memory, um, we can adjust the fan speeds, and we can also adjust the performance mode. We have quite normal or performance. I stuck with normal and then moved to performance a little later on. So running the Cinebench 2024 test first of all, in normal mode, give us a single score of over 100 points. Now this was nothing out of the ordinary, but when we ran the multi-core score, as expected, the CPU throttled pretty much straight away and I think this is impacting our score a little bit. Now interestingly though when we switch to performance mode we could actually still get a little more out of this thing. We still saw a few more points, a pretty decent score increase to be honest and the power consumption CPU wise according to MSI Afterburner was a little higher, something like 45 watts max um, compared to, I think it went up to like 64 watts max, but the exact figures will be up on screen. In terms of noise, yeah, this is gonna be audible. When you're not doing anything, you're not gonna hear it, but you start doing things that's gonna put pressure on the CPU, basically anything, uh, and you're gonna notice the fan ramp up. It's not the noisiest mini PC I've ever heard. Here's a sample. Now that was taken from when I was running the Cinebench uh, benchmark. But when it comes to gaming, because the GPU, the RSXE graphics are going to be the primary limitation here, well, the fan isn't going to be as loud and that goes for normal and performance mode. In fact, the difference in fan noise between normal and performance mode wasn't actually, to me at least, audibly any different, but it's still gonna be noticeable to say the least. We should talk about gaming then. This i9-3900HK is paired with 32 gigs of DDR4. Of course, we also get the Iris XE graphics, which will boost up to 1500 megahertz. Though we're not always going to see this fixed clock speed. First of all then, I wanna throw up some normal versus performance mode comparisons, whereby uh, the consumption is noticeably different. Now, between normal and performance modes, you're actually gonna see a nice increase in performance with a lot of games, or at least I did here. A few frames per second in it, and not only that, but we saw some improvements to the percentile lows as well, which is arguably more important, a smoother experience gaming-wise with performance mode enabled. Let's take a quick look at some normal versus performance mode. Keep an eye on the power consumption according to the afterburner on screen stats, uh, temperatures and uh, GPU clock speed. So we have CS2 first of all with normal 
performance mode, 64 FPS, 1% low of 37, 0.1% low of 7. In performance mode, we saw an increase to 73 frames per second, so a nice little jump there, 1% low of 56 and 0.1% low of 34, so an increase in consistency too. Grand Theft Auto 5, the legacy or original version of the game in normal mode here, we saw 56, 42 and 35 with performance mode 58, 47 and 43. So a tiny jump in the average performance here but improved percentile lows. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 just about hit 30 FPS with the normal power mode. 24 was that 1% low and 22 was that 0.1% figure. When we look at the performance mode 33 FPS, 28 is that 1% low and 27. We can see slightly increased power draw as well according to the on-screen stats. For gaming purposes it's well worth enabling the performance mode of this mini machine. I think I mentioned before that the fan noise wasn't actually much different and when actually gaming the fan doesn't seem to get as noisy as it does in CPU intensive tasks. Though having said that it doesn't take much for the fan to ramp up to pretty audible speeds. So you've seen the comparisons, now we'll actually run through a few more gaming benchmarks in performance mode, uh, which I'd recommend for gaming, of course. So uh, we'll stick with that and play a few more games just so you can see what the i9 and Iris Xe graphics are capable of. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 to begin 1080p with the lowest settings and FSR performance. Now the game will warn you if you choose FSR performance that certain text will be hard to read. I don't think it looks too bad overall. And we actually hit plus 30 frames per second here, 33 with a 1% low of 28 and a 0.1% low of 27. Years ago Intel integrated graphics were a bit of sort of meme material, but they're certainly better than ever now. Um, I've always found them quite handy, actually. I remember playing GTA San Andreas on Intel GMA graphics, uh, and that was certainly doable when I was a young lad. Uh, so now <laughs> I feel spoiled with the even the Iris Xe. Now, they, they still have some way to go in keeping up with the competition. AMD's integrated graphics like the 680M, 780M are leagues ahead, but Iris graphics can certainly offer acceptable performance these days. CS2 so at 1080p lowest here for plus 60 FPS, 73 to be precise with a 1% low of 56 and a 0.1% low of 34. Not too bad at all. The worst thing about this uh, benchmark is actually my gameplay, but that seems to be part and parcel of any CS2 benchmark uh, these days on this channel. GTA 5, the legacy version or the original version of the game, we'll be testing the enhanced version later on, but for now we have the original game with high textures and all else lowest, with the sliders set to medium and FXAA for 58 frames per second, so getting pretty close to 60 there. The percentile lows also represented some pretty smooth and consistent gameplay as well. I didn't think we'd be able to hit 30 plus FPS with Cyberpunk 2077 and these graphics, but with the lowest settings and XESS set to performance, uh, we saw 35 with a 1% low of 27 and a 0.1% low of 23. These figures will dip a bit in and around uh, Night City, but a plus 30 FPS average as you can see, is still very much on the cards here. We probably could have gone a little bit higher with Fortnite, but I selected the performance mode API with 100% resolution scaling for 112 FPS. The more frames here, the better. The percentile lows do leave a little something to be desired, and there were certainly some places where we saw quite a few dips and drops, but after a while of playing, this sort of evened itself out a bit. Red Dead Redemption 2, 1080p with the ultra textures and all else set to lowest with 80% resolution scale because FSR 2 seemed to make things worse performance wise, whereas just dropping the scale didn't. It actually improved things by a few uh, FPS. So 36 here, a 1% low of 28 and a 0.1% low of 23. I didn't think we'd be able to see plus 30 frames per second for this one, but we did and the game still looks Pretty decent even at low, but keep textures at ultra if you can because they look pretty bad at anything other than ultra settings. Back in GTA 5 now, this time with the enhanced version of the game, a 1080p with a minimum preset, probably worth sticking to the legacy game with hardware like this, but we saw 40 frames per second with a 1% low of 34 and a 0.1% low of 33. So again, it's a consistent experience, but our average is of course going to be a little lower. I still think this looks better. Um, than the legacy version uh, with the minimum settings here, but 
each to their own. Uh, it's all down to a matter of opinion, but both versions of the game will run just fine on Iris XE. Skyrim now, for one of our older tested games with the low preset, hit 58 frames per second. This is capped at 59, 60 by default, so we weren't too far off here. And as you can see by the percentile loads, the performance was pretty consistent overall. I wasn't sure what to expect from Left 4 Dead, but it's one of my favorite games, so I thought I'd include it. It's certainly an older and easier to run title, which is ideal for this sort of system. We saw over 200 FPS on average in this level with the highest settings and anti-aliasing off. I wasn't expecting this result at all. Finally, then we have Atom 4. This is a fairly new release, but it's quickly become one of my favourite games in recent years. It actually runs quite well on a range of hardware, and here, with the low settings and 80% resolution scale, we can hit almost 40 FPS, so not bad considering the Iris XE graphics inside this thing. Certainly a respectable result, but there will be a few dips and drops, especially as you encounter the various enemies across the map. So overall then, the Geekom IT13 2025 edition, it's an interesting little PC. I can really appreciate what Geekom have tried to do here, cramming an i9-13900HK 14-core 20-thread CPU inside a system like this is a, is a pretty bold move. It's a, it's pretty cool from an engineering standpoint, I think. But yeah, it's going to run warm. It's certainly going to be audible. And you may notice some throttling in CPU intensive tasks. And in games, it might be that you're not always hitting your maximum iGPU clock speeds, either perhaps hindering performance a little there. I get it, uh, putting an i9 in a PC, but I think if you want to stick with that, then it's worth uh, building a bigger enclosure to add better CPU cooling just for the sake of the temperatures and noise as a little side note as well there's no oculink port on here which i would have liked to see it's certainly worth uh, checking out the competition to see which systems offer similar specs but may have an oculink port to add a uh, external graphics card that's going to run faster see what the prices are like with similar specs as well some pcs you might also find that they can plug into a dock we've checked a couple of b-link ones out uh, or one B-Link one that does that, which is a pretty cool concept. But overall, thanks for watching. This is probably my last mini PC review uh, for a while now. I'm going to go back to building some really cheap desktop systems. Thanks for watching this one, though. Thanks to Geekon for sending this over. You may have noticed the little paid promotion tab at the start of the video. Uh, no cash money was exchanged. They just sent me this for review. And I think they also provided some discount codes if any of you want to check those out. And there'll be some links to Amazon down below. If you want to... Uh, Go and have a look for yourselves and if this is something you're in the market for then all the links will be in the description but thanks as always and i'll see you all in the next one